Hi, I'm Lucy. You know me from rambling about not enough language data and Wikidata. And I thought instead of rambling today, which I leave to Lydia later today, um, I'll just show you a bit or give you an insight on the projects we did using the data that we already have in Wikidata for different causes. So underserved languages compared to the keynote we just heard where uh, the person was talking about underserved as like minority languages, underserved languages to me are any languages that don't have enough representation in the web. Um, yeah, just to get that clear. So uh, what, who am I? Why am I always talking about languages on Wikidata? Not sure, but I am, so I'm a computer science PhD student at the University of Southampton. I'm a research intern at Bloomberg in London at the moment. I'm a residence at Newspeak House in London. I am a researcher and project manager for the Scribe project, which I'll go into in a bit. And I uh, recently got into the idea of oral knowledge and oral citation. Kimberly's sitting there right there. Um, and then occasionally I have time to sleep and do other things, but that's very rare. Um, so if you're interested in any of those things, come talk and speak to me. Generally, uh, this is a very open presentation of your questions in between. I'll run through a lot of things in a very short time now. Uh, come to me afterwards if you're interested in any of them. Uh, speak to me. I'm here. I'm always very happy to speak to people. So, uh, so that's a bit of what we will talk about today. So Wikidata, I give an introduction, even though that's obviously not as necessary. Uh, the article placeholder is aimed for Wikipedia readers, Verscribe, which is aimed at Wikipedia editors. And then we have one topic uh, of my research, which is completely outside of Wikipedia, where we use um, Wikidata for question answering. Um, so... Just a quick rerun, why is Wikidata so cool for low resource languages? Well, we have those unique identifier, identifiers. Uh, I'm speaking to people that know that much better than me even. And then we have labels in different languages. Uh, those can be in over, I think, 400 languages by now. Uh, so we have a good option here to reuse language in different forms and uh, capture it. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit of me rambling about Wikidata because I can't stop it. Um, we compared Wikidata compared to the native speakers and we can see obviously uh, there are languages that are widely spoken in the world as Chinese, uh, Hindi or Arabic, but then very low coverage in Wikidata. Um, this, then the opposite, so we have the Dutch and the Swedish community which are super active in Wikidata, which is really cool and that just points out that even though we have like low number of speakers, we can have a big impact if people are very active um, in the communities, which is really nice and really good, but also let's try to equal that graph out in the future. Um, so cool, so now we have all this language data in Wikidata with low resource Wikipedias, so we thought, what can we do? Well, um, my uh, undergrad supervisor is sitting here, and we worked back then in the golden days on something called the article placeholder, um, which takes triples from Wikidata and displays it on Wikipedia. And that's pretty much relatively straightforward, so you just take the uh, content of Wikidata, display it on Wikipedia to attract more readers and then eventually more editors in the different low resource languages. They're dynamically generated so they're not like stubs or bot articles that then flood the Wikipedia um, so people can edit them. It's basically a starting point and we thought well we have that content, we have that knowledge somewhere already which is Wikidata. It's often already in the languages but they don't have articles so at least give them the insight into the information. Uh, the article placeholders are live on 14 low resource Wikipedias. Um, if your Wikipedia community, if you're part of a Wikipedia community and interested in it, let us know. Um, and then I went into research and I got stuck with the article placeholder though. So we started to look into text generation from Wikidata for Wikipedia and low resource languages. And text generation is really interesting because in research it was at that point when we started the project completely only focused on English, which is a bit pointless in my experience because, I mean, you have a lot of people writing in English, but then 
what we need is people write in those low resource languages. And our starting point was that looking at triples on Wikipedia is not exactly the nicest thing. I mean, as much as I love the article placeholder, it's not exactly what you want to see or expect when you open a Wikipedia page. So we try to generate text. Uh, we use this beautiful neural network model where we encode Wikidata triples. If you're interested more in like the technical parts, come and talk to me. And so realistically, with neural text generation, you can generate one or two sentences before it completely scrambles and becomes useless. Uh, so we generated one sentence uh, that describes the topic of the triple. And so this, for example, is Ar Arabic. Uh, we generate the sentence about Marrakesh, uh, where it just describes the city. Um, so for that, then, we uh, tested this. Uh, so we did studies, obviously, to, to test if our approach works and if it makes sense to use such, such things. And because we're very application-focused, we tested it with actual Wikipedia readers and editors. So first we uh, tested it with Wikipedia readers in Arabic and Esperanto. So our use cases were Arabic and Esperanto. Um, and we can see that our model can generate sentences that are very fluent and that feel very much surprisingly a lot actually like Wikipedia sentences. So it picks up, so we train on, for example, for Arabic, we train on Arabic with the idea to say uh, we want to keep the cultural context of that language and not let it influence like from other languages uh, that have higher coverage. Um, and then we did a study with Wikipedia editors because in the end the article placeholder is just a starting point for people to start editing and we tried to measure how much of the sentences would they reuse, how much is useful for them basically and you can see that there's a high number of reuse especially in Esperanto when we test with editors um, and finally um, we did also qualitative interviews with Wikipedia editors across six languages uh, I think we had about 10 people we interviewed um, and we tried to get more of an understanding what's the human perspective on those generated sentences. So now we can have like a very quantified way of saying, yeah, yeah, they're good. But we wanted to see what, how, how is the interaction and especially with like whatever always happens in net neural machine translation and neural text generation is that you have those missing word tokens, which uh, we put as rare in there. So that's the example sentences we used. Um, all of them are in Marrakesh. So we wanted to see how much are people bothered by it, what's the quality, what is the things that point out to them. And uh, we can see that the mistakes by the networks, like those rare tokens, are often just ignored. And there's this interesting factor that because we didn't tell them where this it happens, like uh, where we got the we got the sentences from, because it was on like on a user page of mine, but it looked like it was on a Wikipedia, people tr just trust it. And I think that's very important when we look into those kind of uh, research directions that we look into. We cannot override this trust into Wikipedia. So if we work with uh, Wikipedians and Wikipedia itself, if we take things from, for example, Wikidata, that's good because it's also human curated. But when we start with like, artificial intelligence projects, uh, we have to be really careful what we actually expose people to because they just trust the information that we give them. Um, so we could see, for example, in the Arabic version, it gave the wrong location for Marrakesh and people, even the people I interviewed that were living in Marrakesh didn't pick up on that because just it's on Wikipedia, so it should be fine, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we found there's a magical threshold for the length of a generated text, so that's something we found especially in comparison with the content translation tool uh, where you have a long gener automatically generated text and people were complaining that content translation was very hard to, because you're just doing post editing so you don't have the creativity. There are other remarks on content translation I usually make, I'll skip them for now. Um, but yeah, so uh, that one sentence was helpful because even if it made n mistakes, people were still willing to fix them because it's a very short intervenience in the end. And then finally, a lot of people pointed out that it was particularly good for new editor, so for them to have a starting point, to have those triples, to have a sentence, so they have something to start from. So after all those interviews were done, 
I was like, oh, that's very interesting. Um, what else can we do with that knowledge? And so we started a new project, um, exactly because there weren't enough yet. And uh, the new project we have is called Scribe. And Scribe focuses on uh, new editors that want to write a new article, and particularly people who haven't written an article on Wikipedia yet, and specifically also on no resource languages. Um, so the idea is that, uh, that's the pixel version of me, um, all my slides are basically references to people in this room, which I really love. Feels like I'm home again. Um, so uh, yeah, I want to write a new article, and but I don't know where to start as a new editor. And so we have this called, uh, project Scribe. Scribe is a, a profession, of, or was the name of someone with a f profession of writing in ancient Egypt. Um, so the Scribe project's idea is that we want to give people basically a hand when they start writing their first articles. So give them a skeleton, give them a skeleton that's based on their language Wikipedia instead of just translating the content from another language Wikipedia. So the first uh, thing we want to do is plan section titles, um, then select references for each section, ideally in the local Wikipedia language, and then summarize those references to give a starting point to write. Um, for, for the project, we have a Wikimedia Foundation project grant, so it just started. Um, so I'm very, very open to feedback in general. Uh, that was the very first, very not so beautiful uh, layout, but just for you to get an overview. So there is this idea of like collecting references, images from comments, uh, section titles. And so the main things we want to use Wikidata for is uh, the sections. So basically we want to see what are articles on similar topics already existing in your language. So we can understand how the language community decided on structuring um, articles. And then we look for the images, obviously, where Wikidata also is a good point to get go through. Um, and then we made a prettier interface for it uh, because we decided to go mobile first. So most of communities that we aim to work with uh, have, are very heavy on mobile editing. And um, so we do this mobile first uh, focus. So, and then it also forces us to break down into steps, which eventually will lead to, yeah, I don't know, a step-by-step -step guide on how to write a new article. So an editor comes, they can select section headers based on existing articles in their language, um, write one section at a time, switch between the sections, and select references um, for each section. Um, yeah, so the idea is that we will have an easier editing experience, especially for new editors, to keep them in, uh, integrate Wikidata information and if, add images from Wikimedia Commons as well. Um, if you're interested in Scribe, um, I'm working together on this project with Hardy. Um, there is a lot of things online, um, but then also just come and talk to us. Also, if you're editing a low-resource Wikipedia, we're still looking for people to interview because we're trying to emulate. <laughs> we're trying to emulate as much as we can what people already experience, how they already edit. I'm not big on Wikipedia editing. Also, my native language is German, so I need a lot of input from editors that uh, want to, yeah, tell me um, what they need, what they want, where they think this project can going can go and if you're into Wikidata, also come and talk to me, please. Um, okay, so that's all the projects or the most of the projects we did inside the Wikimedia world. And I want to give you one short overview of what's happening in on my end of research uh, around Wikidata as well. So um, we had this, so I was part of a project that works a lot with question answering, and I don't know too much about question answering, but what I do know a lot about is knowledge graphs and multilinguality. So basically what we wanted to do is, we have a question answering system that gets a question from a user, and we wanted to select a knowledge graph um, that can answer the question best. And again, we focused on multilingual question answering systems. So if I want to ask something about Bach, for example, 
um, in Spanish and French, because that's the two languages I know best, uh, then what question answering, what knowledge graph has the data to actually answer those questions? Um, so what we did was we found a method to rank knowledge graphs um, based on the metadata um, of language that's in, yeah, that appears in the knowledge graph. We split it by class and then we look for each class into what languages are covered best and then depending on the question can suggest a knowledge graph. Um, from the big knowledge graphs we looked into and that are very known and very widely used, Wikidata covers the most languages over all knowledge graphs and we used a um, <coughs> test bed, so we used a testing data, a benchmark data set called CULT, which we then translated, uh, which was originally for DBpedia, we translated it over for those five knowledge graphs into Sparkle questions. And then we uh, gave that to a crowd and looked into which knowledge graph has the best answers for each of those Sparkle queries. And overall, uh, the crowd workers preferred Wikidata's answers because they are very precise. They, uh, well, they are in most of the languages that the others don't cover, um, and they are not as repetitive or redundant as the word I'm looking for. So, just to make a quick recap on the whole topic of Wikidata and the future and languages. So, we can say that there. Wikidata is already widely used for numerous applications in Wikipedia and then outside Wikipedia for research. So what I talked about is just the things I do research on, but there is still so much more. So there's machine translation using knowledge graphs, there's rule mining over knowledge graphs, it's entity linking and text. There's so much more research happening at the moment and Wikidata is more and more getting popular for usage of it. So I think we are at a very good stage to uh, push and connect the communities um, yeah, to get the best from both sides, basically. Uh, thank you very much. If you want to have a look at any of those projects, they're there. Uh, my slides are in comments already. If you want to read any of the papers, I think all of them are open access. If you can't find any of them, write me an email and I send it to you immediately. Thank you very much. Hey, are there any questions? <laughs> yeah. I come around. Hi, Lucy. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to see you taking this forward. And now I'm really curious about Scribe. Um, the example here with the Nile University, was it the idea that the person says, this is a university, and then you go to Wikidata and say, oh gosh, universities have places and presidents and I don't know what all, that you're using these as the prompts for telling the person what to do? So basically, so the idea is that someone says, I want to write about Nile University. We look into Nile University's Wikidata item and let's say, we, I work a lot with Arabic, so let's say we then go in Arabic Wikipedia, so we can make a, um, a grid basically of all items that are around Nile University, so that are also universities, there are also universities in Cairo, or there are also universities in Egypt, stuff like that, or they have similar topics. So we can look into all the similar items on Wikidata, and if they already have a Wikipedia entry in Arabic Wikipedia, we can look at the section titles. <gasps> exactly, and then we can make basically the most common way about writing about a university in Cairo on Arabic Wikipedia. Yeah, so that's the... <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for your inspiring talk. Thank I was you. wondering if this would work uh, for languages and incubator. Like I work with really low, 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 low resource the languages, and um, and I, yeah, and this thing about doing it mobile would be a huge thing because in many communities they only have phones, not laptops. So would it work? So I think. Um to an extent. So the general structure, the skeleton of the application would work. Um, two things that we, we are thinking about a lot at the moment for exactly those use cases is how much would we want, for example, to say 
if there are no articles on a similar topic in your Wikipedia, how much do we want it to get it from other Wikipedias? And that's why I'm basically doing those interviews at the moment, because I try to understand how much people already look at other language Wikipedias to make the structure of an article. Are they generally equal or do they differ a lot based on cultural context? So that, that would be something to consider, but there is a possibility to say we take everything from all language Wikipedias and then make an average, basically. And the other problem is referencing. So that's something we find, like we make it very convenient because we use a lot of Arabic, and Arabic actually has the problem that there are a lot of references, but they're very literally used or not widely used in Wikipedia. That's not true, obviously, for all languages. And that's something I'd be very interested... Like, let's talk. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. I'd be very interested on your perspective on it, because I'd like to know uh, yeah, what, what you think about referencing then from English or other languages. Have you ever tried... Like, w what we do is we normally reference to um, interviews we have. Yeah. Like, we put them in our repository, institutional repository, because these languages don't have written references. And I feel like that that is the way to go, but... I'm, I'm currently also, Kimberly and I are discussing a lot. We made a session on Wikimania on oral knowledge and oral citations. Yeah, we should hang out and uh, have a long conversation. <laughs> so, Nicolas Vigneron, uh, we'll talk about the medium size, which is probably around 10 people, so it's medium for yeah. uh, Brits on Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if we can use scribe uh, uh, how to find common plan, the other way around for existing article to find the outliers that are supposed to be this plan but are not. Yes. A way of more or less patrolling or improvement existing article. Uh, Which yeah, is a bit I think, the reverse you do. But. I think there's... there's um, I forgot their name, I think Diego, in the Wikimedia Foundation research team, who's working a lot at the moment with uh, section headings. But yes, generally the idea is the same. So instead of like using them to make an average, you could say this is not like the average. Uh, that is very possible, yeah. Hi, Lucy. I'm Hi. Erica Zellini from Wikimovement Brazil. And oh, very, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. So, I'm Erica Zellini from Wikimovement Brazil. And I'm really impressed with your work because it's really in sync with what we've been working on in Brazil with the Ambabel tool. I don't know if you heard about it. Okay. It's a tool that we use to automatically generate Wikipedia entries using Wikidata information oh. in a simple <laughs> way that can be replicated on other uh, Wikipedia languages. So we've been working on Portuguese mainly, right. and we're trying to get on English Wikipedia tools, but it can be replicated on any language, basically. Yeah. And I think that we could talk about it. Absol Absolutely. It would be super interesting, because the article placeholder is an extension already. Yeah. So it might be worth to integrate your efforts into the existing extension. Mm -hmm. Lydia is also fully for yeah. it. And, uh, <laughs> and then, because, so one of the problems, Marius, correct me if I'm wrong, we had was that article placeholder doesn't scale as well as it should. So I'm not so article place so it's not on Portuguese because we were always afraid it will break everything. <laughs> Correct? Yeah. And then uh, Marius just think a pose. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> Don't want to say anything about this. Um, but but yeah we should connect because I'd be super interested to see how you solve those issues and how it works for you. Um. I'm going to present on the second section of the Lightning Talk about this project that we've been developing and we've been using it on Glam Week initiatives and education projects already. Perfect. So, so there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, let's chat. Cool. Some other questions on new projects? <laughs> Hi, uh, my name's Alon and I think this is extremely cool. Um, I had a few questions about the um, ge generating uh, wiki sentences from neural networks. Yeah. Um, so I've come across um, another project that was attempting to do this, and it was essentially using triples as input, sentences as output, yeah. and it was able to generate very fluent sentences, but it sometimes they weren't, cor they didn't ex actually, um, they weren't correct with regards to the triple. And I was curious if you had 
any ways of um, doing validity checks of this. Like mm -hmm. sometimes the triple is subject predicate object, but it creates a, the language model says, okay, this object is very rare. I'm going to say you were born in San Jose instead of San Francisco or vice versa. Exactly. Um, and I was curious if you had come across this. Um, so, so that's what we call hallucinations, the idea that exactly. there's something in the uh, sentence that wasn't in the original triple in the data. Um, what we do, so we don't do anything about it. We just also realize that that's happening. It's even more happening for the lower resource because we work cross domain, so we are domain independently generating. The traditional energy work is always bio, biography domain usually. So uh, that happens a lot because we just have little training data in the lower resource languages. Um, we have a few ideas. It's one of the million topics um, I'm supposed to work on at the moment. Um, uh, one of them is to use uh, entity linking and relation extraction to align what we generate with the triples we input it in the first place to see if it's off or the network generates information it shouldn't have or it, it cannot know about, basically. Uh, that's also all I can say about this because now time is over. Yeah, I, I'd love to talk offline about this if you have time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's chat about it. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Thank it was you, lovely. Thank <laughs> you.